Hello everyone, hope you are loading well. So in this video, we'll discuss the last problem of lead code weekly contest 350. It's a hard level problem. The problem name is painting the walls. Let's see what the problem is asking us to do. It says that you are given two zero index integer arrays cost and time of size n representing the cost and time taken to paint n different walls respectively. Okay, there are two painters available. A paid painter that paints the ith wall in time t i, okay, time of i units of time, takes cost of i units of money, okay, and a free painter that paints any wall in one unit of time at cost of zero. But the free painter can only be used if the paid painter is already occupied, okay, return the minimum amount of money required to paint the end walls, okay. So basically, you have some walls, just see here the cost and time. So you have four walls here, okay. And the cost to paint the ith wall is one unit, but it takes time one unit as well. Okay. The cost to paint the second wall is two and it takes two unit of time and so on. Right. This is for the paid painter. So you have two types of painters, right? This basically tells that if the paid painter paints a wall, he or she will basically takes this amount of time and this amount of cost will have to be paid by us. Okay. However, there is another type of painter as well that particular painter can paint any wall in one unit of time and the cost that is incurred by us in that case is zero okay but there is a condition the paid painter can only paint okay if the sorry the free painter can only paint if the paid painter is already occupied okay so we have to find the minimum amount of money that we have to spend right rather we can spend to paint all the involves right so let's see how we'll solve this uh, let's see the first example so i have four walls one two three and two the cost the time is basically one two three into so both the values are same this is cost this is time meaning if you if the paid painter paints the you know first wall he will take one you know one amount of money one unit of money and take one unit of time similarly if he paints the second wall he takes two amount of money and takes two amount of time and so on right so let's see what we can do so if we pick this one right i'm, I'm picking up what the paid painter is painting okay if this paid painter starts painting the first wall okay so what i can do paid painter is painting the first wall that the cost that will be incurred is one but during that one unit of time since this this painter is occupied okay i can assign another wall to the free painter okay so what i'll do i can assign this well this wall okay this wall is costly right it's costly to paint so the free painter can paint this wall this is gone okay now what I can do, I can after one unit of time, both have painted one wall each and the cost that I've given is one and two walls are painted this one and this one. Now I can assign any other wall since both of them have cost of two only. Okay, I can assign any wall to the paid painter and during that amount of time, the free painter can paint the next wall, right? For, for example, if I want this wall to be painted, the paid painter will take two units of time. But during that time, the free painter can paint actually two walls, but I have only one wall remaining, right? So that's it. Total three amount of total. I paid three unit of money and I'll be able to paint all the four walls, right? Let's see about this one. How do I solve this one? So cost is two, three, four and two. The time is one, 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 one. Okay. So what I'll do, I'll, I'll let's talk about paid painter and free. So I can ask the paid painter to paint this wall because the cost of painting this wall is two. Remember the time for all of them is one in this case, the cost is two. Okay. So during that one amount of time, during that one amount of time, I can ask the free painter to paint this wall. Okay. So this wall, this wall gone. Now, uh, and at the second moment, right, what I can do, I can ask the paid painter to paint this wall. Remember the cost of painting this wall is more. So I'll ask him to paint this wall. Okay. So I'll have to pay a cost of again two. Now during that time, the free painter can paint this, right? So all the walls will be painted and the total cost that I'll, I'll have to pay is four units, okay? The constraints are the total number of walls that I'll have is 500, okay? Uh, the cost of painting the ith wall can be 10 to the power six and the time is basically 500, right? So just see, let's look into some of the observations here, okay? So I need to find the minimum cost, right? I have to find the minimum cost, but there is also, a, you know, uh, there's also one, there's one more observation. What is that? Suppose I assign a wall to paid painter. Okay. The cost of that is C and the time is T. Okay. 
Now during this T amount of time, the free painter can actually paint T walls. Okay, can actually paint T walls. Getting it? And obviously I'll, I'll uh, probably be assigning the, you know, highest, uh, all the most expensive walls to this guy. Okay, all I need to do is I need to take care that I pick up a group of walls. I pick up a group of walls such that their cost is minimized and the total amount of time that is taken to paint this set of walls, you know, is greater than or equals to the number of remaining walls. Okay, remaining walls. Why? Suppose total I have 10 walls. Okay, I have total 10 walls. So I have an array of cost and an array of time. Okay, I pick up a set of walls that is to be pa uh, painted by the paid painter. Obviously, I'll try to pick up the walls, which basically are uh, less expensive, right? They are cheap. Okay, so I, if I pick up a wall uh, with cost, suppose C1, and the time taken for that is T1. Let's take concrete value cost is 10 and time is suppose five units. Okay, so what will happen? While the paid painter is uh, painting uh, this wall, it takes five units of time. Now during that time, what I'll do, I'll assign five walls to the free painter. Okay, free painter. So total, how many walls are now painted in five units of time? Five have been painted by the free painter plus one, one has been painted by the paid painter. Total six walls have been painted. Now the next, uh, in, the, in the next instance, what I can do, I can pick up another wall because the first priority is I have to assign a wall to the paid painter. Okay. I pick up a wall again. Suppose the cost is, uh, let's assume the cost is 50 and the time taken is three units. Okay. So I assign this wall. Okay. I assign this wall. So I pay an extra cost of 50 and it takes three units of time. So till now six walls, six walls were painted three, uh, uh, wall was painted now i have assigned one more wall to the paid painter okay but it takes three unit of time so now what will happen in those three unit of time right in those three unit of time three more walls will be printed total how many walls have painted total 10 walls are painted so all the 10 walls have been painted where i just had to assign two walls to the paid painter okay such that obviously the cost is minimized suppose this was four so that means the free painter at last will be left out with a time, right? We don't have any more walls to paint. However, if the cost would have been two, then the paid painter would have taken two units of time. Okay. During that two walls would have been painted by the free painter and one last remaining wall should have been assigned to the paid painter. Simple, right? So if you look into this problem, if, if uh, like people are aware with the knapsack problem, right? So what does knapsack says? Knapsack says that you have a bag. Okay, the maximum capacity of this bag is supposed C. Okay, and obviously you have some items, right? You have some items. The weight of, uh, so the weight and basically you can say the weight is given and obviously suppose the cost is given, whatever you call it or the value is given, right? Now our aim in knapsack, what we do? Our aim is to put items in this bag, right? Such that the total cost is maximized, right? I have corresponding weights of each and every item. Right? Typical dynamic, what do, you, what do you call it? Knapsack problem. Here, what we have to do, the total number of, here the capacity is C, right? Now here, actually, if you just try to relate these two problems, the total number of items that I have is, the total number of items I have is N, basically N walls. So I have to pick up N walls, right? I have, that means I have, I have to basically consume all the N walls. Okay. And what my aim here is, my aim here is that, is this bag size this bag size is like uh, the number of walls that you have and wh while reducing you know while reducing that wall count right for example if i am assigning a wall to the paid painter so how much by how much quantity will i reduce the number of walls that are still remaining to be painted it will be one wall is painted by this guy and time of i amount of walls are being painted by the free guy okay so it is whatever is the time of i plus one because this one wall will be painted by which person the paid person and this one will be by the free person okay so all i need to do is i need to consume all the walls such that my cost is minimized okay and if i'm if uh, the amount uh, the number of walls painted by uh, the paid painter is x then summation of time of you know x where i goes from 1 to x okay should be greater than or equals to the number of remaining walls 
simple that's what we need to do let me show you the code and that will give you a better feel of how this is working right so just see forget about these two things this is what i call i have created a function this is the cost array this is the time array this is zero this is cost of length so this says that take take the possibilities of the first first element right first element in the array because for every wall i have two possibilities either i can assign it to the paid painter or i can leave it okay so that is why the first element that i have to consider is zeroth element i come here again forget about this condition right either i assign this uh, wall to the paid painter in that case i'm i'm taking this right i'm taking this so what happens what is the cost incurred here cost of painting the current wall plus cost array time array and i i uh, generate the minimum cost for the remaining walls but what will happen how many walls are remaining i have taken this wall i have i've take i've assigned this wall to the paid painter okay so the number of walls remaining to be painted will be whatever were the walls initially minus 1 this one is basically the wall that is being painted by the free painter and times of current because whatever is the amount of time that paid painter is taking in those in that particular time that many walls will be painted by the free painter so walls remaining minus times of current minus 1 okay these many walls are remaining okay however on the other hand if i don't take this wall if i don't assign this wall to the paid painter what will happen cost will be same time will be same i go to the next wall okay and walls remaining will be same right typical dynamic programming problem right exactly similar to how you solve a napsa problem right so this is what you do now whatever is the minimum cost when you take it or do not take it that will be your answer in this case which case that if i consider the current wall and then walls remaining these two combinations then what is my minimum cost okay now comes the terminal condition what is my terminal condition terminal condition is if the number of walls remaining is less than equals to 0 that means i have consumed all the walls so you return 0 or else if you have already computed the result for this combination current and walls remaining you just return it right that is why i am saving my answer here right so we got two dynamic programming problems today right the third one and the fourth one right acha why have i added this cost i have added this one because if current is greater than cost dot length that means if you have consumed the whole array okay you return a large value now people may argue that why can't i return int max something like this right because what happens here is suppose you return integer dot max value okay this guy is running integer dot max value so here what will happen this is also a value greater than 0 as soon as you add a value greater than 0 to integer dot max it will overflow and this value will become negative if this value will become ne negative math dot will min will give you a negative value getting it so you will be getting a wrong answer right you will be getting a wrong answer so that is why i return a value which is large enough but obviously less than the integer dot max value simple right so exactly similar to knapsack problem here what we are doing whenever we are assigning a wall to the paid painter i am reducing the number of walls by 1 because this is being painted by the paid painter and whatever is the time taken by this paid painter in that amount of time the free painter will paint will paint those many walls right that's it <clears throat> and i stop when the number of remaining walls is less than equals to 0 remember it can be less than equals to 0 also right because suppose this is 10 and the amount of time taken is 20 minus n so this is a negative value right so this means that you have consumed all the walls right <clears throat> so finally you return your answer right so i would say this was a very good problem you have to relate this to a you know typical dynamic programming problem and once you are able to convert it into knapsack it will be very easy to solve right so yeah i hope you learn something new from this video do support it by giving our thumbs up do subscribe to the channel in case of any queries mention that in the comment section i'll revert on each one of them thank you take care bye bye